Welcome back to another video in our Web Development Foundations course. So in this video, we're going to be talking about animations in CSS. And as you can see here, I've got this ball that changes colors and is just bouncing across the screen back and forth. So we are basically going to learn how to make simple animations like this in this lecture. So right now, I've got an empty folder. I've got an index.html that's empty. And then I've got a style.css that's also empty. So let's go ahead and populate our index.html. In here, I'm just going to say for the title, CSS animations. And then inside the body, let's give it an H1 tag. And we can say, let's try a CSS animation. And finally, after that, I'm just going to give it a div with a um, class name circle. And up here, let's go ahead and link our style.css. So I can say link and then the CSS down here. Save that. And now if we refresh our page, we've got that over here. If I come into style.css, let's start with a style for the body. And um, basically inside the body, all I'm going to add is a background color. Um, you don't have to do this, obviously. I just don't like the white back there. It's too bright on my eyes. So there we go. We've got a blue background color. And then in here, let's go ahead and um, use our class selector to select our circle div. And let's actually turn that into a circle now. So I could say height 150 pixels width also 150 pixels. And then we'll say a border. Um, we'll say two pixels. Um, and here we could just say solid black. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a background color as well, How about blue. And now if you save that, you see we have a square over here. Let's turn that into a circle by using our border radius property. So border radius and this one, um, obviously down up here because we have 150 pixels for our height and width. If I set this to 75 pixels, which is half of that, it should turn that into a nice circle. And then after that, we are uh, basically going to change one more thing here. And I'm going to say my position is going to be relative just so later we can move this around. Um, now, there we go. We've got a circle with a blue background. And basically, if we want to make a really simple animation, let's just start with something like changing it from maybe from blue to red or something like that. To do that, we have to basically define what our animation is going to look like. And we use we do that using our um, keyframes keyword. So if I do the at sign and then keyframes. Now, after that, I need to give my animation a name. So here I'm just going to call it change color. And then I do the curly brackets, which is going to open up our um, block for our animation. And then in here, I can simply say from and and then down here, we'll add a two block and whatever attributes, whatever CSS properties I put in the from and then in the two, it's going to change from whatever we have in this top block to whatever we have down in this bottom block. So pretty simple here. If I were to come in here and say I want my background color, which is going to be blue at the start, let's say I want to change that to uh, red. So I could say background color red. And now if I save that, you can see nothing happens. And that's because we've made this animation where we're telling our code basically for this change color animation. We want it to change from blue to red, but we've never actually applied this animation to our circle. So to do that, I need to add a few more fields to the circle. So if I come up here and if I say animation, and you can see here, there's the shorthand, but we'll just start with um, this top one here. So if I say animation change color and then save that, now again, nothing's actually happening because there's more fields that we have to set on our animation. So we have set basically our name, but we need to set a few other things. So we can say animation duration. And let's just say I want this to be two seconds. And again, S for seconds, 
m for milliseconds. So that would make it two milliseconds, but we don't want to do that because you won't be able to see that. Um, so we're going to do two seconds just so we can see it. And then after that, we are going to need our, uh, if I go ahead and save that now, you can see whenever I load it, it goes from blue to red and then it just stops. So let's say I want this to continually go back and forth. Well, you can do that using our iteration count. So I could say animation, animation iteration count. And here I could say, um, basically I can give it a number. If I save that now, you could see we get one, two, three, and now it stops. Or if you want it just to keep going, I can say infinite and save that. And now it's just going to go as many times as it possibly can. Um, as long as we have the web page up, this is going to be loading. Now let's say I want to go from blue to red back to blue again. Um, so instead of going, you know, this smooth transition from red to or from blue to red, and then we immediately have that rough transition back to blue. Let's say I want to go blue, fade into red, fade back into blue, fade back into red. Well, there's a way that we can do that as well. And that's going to be our animation direction. So with animation direction here, I can say um, normal, which is what we have right now, is just going to go blue to red. If I were to change this to reverse, now it goes red to blue. Or if you want to fade it back and forth between the two, which is what I was talking about, then we can do alternate. And now you see I'm fading from blue to red and then red back to blue. Another option here, you have alternate reverse. And basically what that's going to do is if I save that, you'll notice now it starts at the back and goes back to blue and then back to red and then back to blue. Um, so alternate and alternate reverse is just controlling where you're starting from. So I'll go ahead and change that back to alternate for now. And down here, there's one more thing that we can do. So if I, yeah, so let's show you that as well. If I say um, my animation timing function, by default, this is going to be linear. And basically what that means is um, at the edge, do we want to slow down and speed up? So if I say linear, it's going to do the same speed the entire time. But if I say I have the option for ease in, now if I save this, you can see at the start it goes slow and at the end it's fast. Or, and I'll show this, it'll be even more obvious when we're moving this later. Um, so I could say ease in, or I could say ease in and out, or ease out. So if I want it slow at the end, but fast at the beginning. So when it gets close to red, which is the end of our animation, it's going to go um, slowly fading into red. But when it goes back to blue, it's going to be quick. Um, or if I want it slow on both ends, I could say ease in out. And this will kind of make a smooth end on both ends of our transition with the middle being faster. So another thing I can do here, let's say I don't want to do just from blue to red. Let's say I want to do something from like blue to red to pink to purple to green. Um, we can do that as well. So if I comment out this line here and down below that, instead of doing from and to, I can actually do percentages. So if I say 0%, that means where we're starting from. And then if I come down here and I can say 25%, and you can define these percents as whatever you want. I'm just going to do increments of 25, so 50%, and then 75%, and then after that, 100%. So this is going to be our two. This is going to be our from. So if I come back up in here, and I say background color, and here we say blue, and then at the end, if I say background color red. So right now, if I save that, this is going to do the same thing that it's been doing, because we have all of these middle increments, but we haven't defined anything there. So if I come in here and decide to pick some more colors, background color, um, green, let's just pick one of these, maybe make that a little brighter. Um, okay, so there's our green. And then here we could say, I want a pink. So background color, pink. 
Again, I'm going to make that just a little brighter here. And finally, down here on our 75%, if I come in and say background color, um, we'll just say purple. So now if I save that, you can see I'm flashing between all of these colors. And let me just slow that down a little bit so you can see that just a little bit better. So I changed it to three seconds on the duration here. So you can actually define the increments from 0, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%. I could even come in here and say 5% and add something different here if I wanted to say like background color white. So these don't have to be even increments. And now you can see I'm going blue, white, green, pink, purple, red. But the white is really fast because we're going from 0 to 5%. So that's a pretty small uh, percentage of the window there. And basically in here with these animations, I can animate anything I want to. So like right now, we are animating our background color. But if I wanted to animate like our position as well, I could say I could come in here and say left, we're going to start at 50 pixels. And then let's just say every single increment here, we want to add another 100 pixels. So I'll skip the five just because that'll make it uneven. So if I say left, and then here, 150 pixels, come down to my 50 and say left, 250 pixels, and then come down to my 75, I could say left, 350 pixels. And then finally down in my 100%, I can say 450 pixels. I guess I need to give it the left property first. So if I say 450 pixels and save that now, you can see we're jumping back and forth between transitions. And that's basically because we have this ease in and out function set. So what it's going to do is it's going to ease in and out of every single one of these. Um, so if I wanted to change that, I could come up here and change that back to linear. And now if I save that, you can see that it's not quite as choppy. It's going back and forth. Um, but really, because this is linear motion, right? I'm going 50 pixels, 150, 250, 350, 450. So every increment of 25. So my increments are the same size. And then inside of that, I'm moving 100 pixels every time. So the distance I'm moving is also the same size. So basically, this is totally linear motion. Because I'm going from 50 at the beginning to 450 at the end, I actually don't need to put all of these keyframes in the middle. So I can actually come up here and either remove or just comment out every one of these lines. And now if all I have to find is my starting 50 pixels and then my ending 450 pixels, if I save that, nothing changes. It does the same exact thing that it's been doing uh, because again, this is linear motion and the computer is just going to extrapolate. Okay, if I'm starting at 50, and I'm ending at 450 pixels going in linear motion, basically the computer is going to read between the lines and fill in the position on every single keyframe in between. So that's pretty simple how that works and pretty convenient. And it makes animations really easy. Another thing that I'll mention here, so just like with like a border or a box shadow or any of that, we have our shorthand property. So up here, we've got all of these different fields set. And if I were to comment that out and come down below and type animation, you see this top one here. I've got animation, name, duration, timing function, delay. Um, so I guess oh, I missed one thing. Let's go ahead and say delay as well. So up here, if I put a delay on here, so animation delay, um, and in here, if I say maybe two seconds, get rid of this garbage line down here, save that. Now, basically, whenever I reload this web page, there's going to be a two second delay before my animation actually starts going. And this is only at the beginning. So you can see, even now when it's looping, the loop keeps going without a two second delay. So this is your initial delay before the animation starts. But if I were to comment all of that out and come down here with my shorthand, I can actually write all of this on one line. So if my name is going to be uh, change color, my duration is going to be three seconds, my timing function 
here we said linear and then my delay two seconds my iteration count I'm gonna put infinite so that it keeps going and then my direction I'll just say alternate again and then this one we don't actually need to define and we didn't talk about that we're not going to worry about that right now so if I save this now um, you can see that this one line here is actually doing the same thing so we've got our color change which is our transition name down here or our animation name rather we've got our three second delay our linear timing function our uh, or sorry our two second delay our three second duration of it and then we have infinite iteration count and then alternating back and forth so I've got all of these properties within one line, and that's just the shorthand, quicker way of writing an animation so that you don't end up writing a ton of code if you're using animations in your CSS code. Um, and again, like I said, we can really put any, any property that we put up here in the circle, we can put down here below. So for example, if I come here and I say, well, I've got my border and my border up above, it's two pixels solid black. Now, if I were to come all the way down to 100% and say border is going to be two pixels, or sorry, rather than two pixels, let's say 20 pixels solid black. Now, you can see as my um, animation goes on, that border is growing. And you can see also that it's getting too big for our um, corner radius up here so because we have 75 which is half of 150 but as I'm adding 20 pixels to 150 it's becoming bigger so we can actually bump that up a little bit so I'm going to make that just maybe 100 and save that and now you see we've got something that looks more like a circle the entire time so you can any property you put up here inside of your CSS that you're applying to your different HTML elements I can animate down here using the keyframes block. So hopefully you found this video helpful and you now know enough about animations to start using them and play around with them. Definitely try it on your own, try to make your own animations on your own web pages and like this video, comment down below if you have any questions and we will see you in the next video.